and that's why they gave it to me. Good morning. It is Wednesday, December 18th, 2019. I'm going to throw Merry Christmas into this, too. We're in the Senator Hearing Room, 555 Court Street, Northeast in Salem, for a weekly Board of Commissioners meeting. We start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I was thinking on this day of national discord, it has specific or special... Um, it just means more today. So if you join me, then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's close to perfection. Thank you very much. Our first item, it's Christmas time. It's supposed to be happy times, but... We're saying goodbye to a lot of people that I really care about, and we have one here we're going to recognize this morning. And we have a presentation uh, regarding uh, Carrie Muller and 20 years of service to Marion County. Um, it has your name, Kevin, but we had a, where did that go? We've got a plaque. Right here. Um, so we're, we, we've listed accomplishments and things and and we're going to present that again we had an opportunity for a, a more informal uh, goodbye but this will be our, our formal for the county and if you'd start it commissioner yeah so you said 20 years to Marion County but 34 years actually I believe in uh, her career uh, between Marion County Yamhill County Lynn Benton County so kind of in the region uh, carries career in behavioral health began in 1986 um, at Yamhill County as a mental health associate. And in Yamhill County, she oversaw treatment services for individuals with mental health needs, women with significant trauma histories, and individuals with intellectual and dis development disabilities. In 1991, Carrie got her counseling, pro professional counseling license. And in 1995, Carrie came to Marion County for the first time as a mental health specialist three, acting as a hospital liaison for the mid Willamette Valley acute care region. In the next nine years, Carrie worked on behalf of the mid Valley region for the mid Valley behavioral care network, managing inpatient psychiatric system for the seven county region. She was instrumental in working with mental health directors to establish a provider panel during the early 2000s, integrating health care and coordinating the patient's journey through services. In 2003, Carrie went to work at Lynn County Health Department as a clinical supervisor, monitoring services to individuals with mental health needs. In 2008, returned to Marion County to work for Rod Calkins as a program supervisor she was later pro promoted to a team supervisor with the responsibility of managing complex mental health addiction services and the Marion County Provider Panel. In 2012, Oregon went through another transformation of its Medicaid program that replaced the Oregon Health Plan contractors with risk-bearing, locally governed provider networks called coordinated care organizations. Oregon was the first state to agree to meet specific benchmark, benchmarks or face federal consequences if these benchmarks were not met. Carrie worked closely with the Behavioral Care Network, to helping to develop innovative practices, including the EAST program, which we now call ESA. EAST brings early awareness of the, trauma, of the impact of trauma, co-occurring treatment, and inclusion of individuals with lived mental health and substance use at the decision-making table. She worked to build a system where the voice and experience of peer-delivered services is valued. This was a completely different way of practicing health care in the state. Carrie was promoted to division director in 2013, where she led the developmental disabilities, CAPS, and the addiction treatment services programs. The Board of Commissioners appointed Carrie as the Marion County Health and Human Services Administrator in March of 2017. One of Carrie's significant accomplishments is the establishment of the department's first formal strategic plan. Carrie's retirement is effective January 2nd, 2020, and we wish her all the very best and hope that she enjoys the places she will go traveling around the world. Congratulations, Carrie. So, um, 
Jan wanted to add something. I just wanted to say thank you, Carrie, for all the work you've done. It's been a pleasure working with you. And I know at the party retirement party we had a couple nights ago, people talked about your passion and your dedication to serving the community. But what really struck me is how many lives you've changed from an individual perspective as a clinician all the way up to program and systems at the regional and state level. You have really made a difference for people, and it's been an honor and a pleasure serving with you. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. I, I didn't get to, I, I thought about saying this lot, because they gave us a script to read, and, and you know me, I, I don't like to stay on <laughs> script. It gets me in trouble, but one of the things about Carrie is that, uh, and I say this about a lot of our department heads, there's one sitting next to you that is very similar in this characteristic as a leader. When you leave, things don't fall apart because you have this leadership ability that you've put people around you and allowed them to be and, and encourage them and help them to be the best that they can be. You see the number one on people's foreheads and you help bring that out. And uh, in the short time, the, the I guess five and a half years I've got to be around and, and work with you, I, I've noticed that about your leadership style and, and that is something that we all should emulate and try to be like. So thank you very much for what you're going to leave behind in the strategic plan and the and the staff that's going to be there. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Anything? No, just thank you for your service. 34 years, is that right? I mean, that's something to be applauded. All of us who are in these jobs know how much sacrifice that requires. So thank you, and thank you for your care for the people of our community. See, I'd say something, but it kind of negative because it comments on how short a time too short that's all I'm gonna say <laughs> now we've given you a plaque once before and took it back but now we're gonna give it to you for real you can keep it Thank you all. Um, I will say the last couple months um, since I've made my announcement, I've been practicing um, and every time I say it out loud that um, my time here is coming to an end, it gets just slightly easier. Um, but I, I know for um, my commitment to this community and the services have been very, very meaningful to me. So I will take um, these last few months and these 34 years with me into uh, this journey that I'm headed on. Um, I plan to see as much of the world as I possibly can and spend as much time with my family as they'll tolerate. So I'm really looking forward to uh, this next journey. I, I do want to say that this is my community. Um, so even though I am stepping away from this really um, important role, a role that I've honored and uh, been privileged to serve in, um, I care deeply um, in this role and as a citizen of Marion County. So um, I appreciate what you had to say about the people who are here, 450 people who work for me, with me, by me in the department, and every single one of them comes every day with their passion and their commitment to this work, and I am just so honored to be a part of this team. So thank you. Anyway, 
Next item is our consent calendar. Commissioner Cameron, since we know that it's probably been at least a year, perhaps more, since you've had the opportunity to do this, we'd like to see, kind of give you one more chance. <laughs> well, I, I have one more board meeting, right, to make you do it. Perhaps. Right. Maybe, yes. maybe I'll be chair on December 31st still? Yes. All right. Consent calendar. I'll move the consent calendar on the Board of Commissioners OLCC application recommended approval of Lucky Market LLC DBA Lucky Market. Approve an order establishing the committee and commission appointment for Marion County elected officials. Under business services, approve a recommendation to update classification specification and adjust upward the pay grade for classification number 535, Health and Human Services Administrator. Number 128, Shelter Technician. Adjust upward the pay grade for number 363, Business Services Director. Number 364, Chief Financial Officer. Number 065, Community Services Director. Number 631, Deputy District Attorney 1. Number 632, Deputy District Attorney 2. Number 633, Deputy District Attorney 3. Number 635, Deputy District Attorney number four, number 634, trial team supervisor. Under community services, approve an, an order appointing Heidi DeCoster as key volunteer to the Marion County Fair Board with a term ending December 31st, 2022. Good job. Under finance, approve a quick claim deed for the private sale bid to purchase tax foreclosed property tax ID number R55458 located in the city of Mahama. Also under finance, approve a quick claim deed to sell back tax foreclosed property tax ID number R82081 to the prior owner of record. Under Health and Human Services, approve a contract for services with WorkSafe Service, Inc. in the amount of $182,400 to provide urinalysis testing collection services for Marion County Circuit Court specialty programs through June 30th, 2021. And finally, under Public Works, receive a notice of hearings officer decision recommending denial of comprehensive plan amendment zone change partition ZPZCP Case number 19-005, Finnick. I'll second the motion. Okay, it's been moved and second to approve our consent calendar this morning. Any further discussion? I would just add a tiny one. It, we, we go over very quickly all the boards and commissions that the three of us are, uh, represent. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a long list and shows the breadth of the things the county is interested in. With that, I'll call a question. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. First action item this morning is we consider approval of an order that appoints Colm Willis as chair, Sam Brentano as vice chair, and Kevin Cameron as second vice chair of the Marion County Board of Commissioners. And now, Jan and Jane, your names are here. Who would like the opportunity? Oh. I'll take it. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. For the record, I'm Jan Fritz. And before you today is board order. By statute, you have to ORS 203.240, subsection 1C. You need to appoint a chair annually. We go through a process. Uh, November 25th, we had a retreat with the board. And every year, we determine who's the chair, who's the first vice chair, and second vice chair. So in 2020, the board order states Colin Willis will be the chair. Sam Brentano will be the first vice chair. And Commissioner Kevin Cameron will be second vice chair. Yes. That most important. Do you have any plans for your new I love role it when you guys are both chair? not here and I'm second vice chair. I get lots of things. <laughs> All right. Someone care to make a motion to approve that order? Is that my motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve an order appointing Colin Willis, myself as chair, Sam Brentano as vice chair and Kevin Cameron, a second vice chair of the Marion County Board of Commissioners. I'll second the motion. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the order. Any further discussion? Last chance? <laughs> nope. I hear none, all in, all in favor then say aye. 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 Aye, that motion passes. We'll do it another time, but you have done a nice job this year. And we expect good yeah. things from you too. Too late now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, our next item is under community services. Boy, they're already in place and say, let's move this along. Consider <laughs> approval of a resolution to dissolve the Marion County Economic Development Advisory Board, Tamara Getch and Jason Schneider. Good morning and go ahead. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. For, the record, I'm Tamara go. For the record, I'm Tamara Getch, Director of Community Services. And Jason Schneider, Economic Development Coordinator with Community Services. We bring this before you today because as I came on five months ago, I've heard about the Economic Development Advisory Board that we had had since, 2000, uh, since 2003 that the county has had to advise economic lottery fund dollars. That organization has not met since June of 2018 and the program in which they are primarily managing, which was the business support grants, has also been <coughs> away with about a year ago prior to my time here. And in light of some of the new programming that we're taking on, which you'll hear about soon, the Community Pro uh, Prosperity Initiative, and informal meetings with our stakeholders, uh, we've determined that it's time now to dissolve formally EDAB um, and therefore bring it for you this morning for consideration. Thank you. Comments? Yeah, what I, I'm, I'm just gonna. Yeah, this is this has been long coming, and I know. I just want to say thank you for the presentation you gave us. I guess that was two weeks ago, where we saw mm -hmm. what the future is going to look like. And uh, um, I want to say thank you to those that may be watching that served on that board mm -hmm. for many, many years, um, and uh, Sarah and Tamara for helping to kind of um, get it to somewhere where we we. Uh, we're all, all on the same page, and then for Tom and, and his work, uh, and uh, finally realizing that we needed to go a different direction. So it's it's it served its purpose. It was a good mm -hmm. thing for the county, I think. Um, but in today's uh, economy and the way things go very quickly and change, um, and we want to be all locally engaged, I think what the future direction is going to be really good. It's interesting though that other counties are just now starting that model and, and uh, following up uh, to where we're at. So. Being new to the state, it seems like we take the lead on a lot of things. Oh, yes. So it's good to see. Should have been at our Public Safety Coordinating Council <laughs> yesterday. There's a lot things, more things coming, so great. Mr. Chair, are you ready? Yes. Uh, That's your motion. Yeah, I'll move uh, that we approve a resolution to dissolve the Marion County Economic Development Advisory Board. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution that dissolves the Marion County Economic Development Advisory Board. Any further discussion? Here and then, then I'll call a question. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. Thank you all involved. And I, too, and not just Thank hope, you. I am quite confident that we're heading in a good direction for the future. The next item this morning is consider a resolution that establishes the Community Prosperity Initiative within the Marion County Community Services Department Economic Development Program. One new person here, Cooper Whitman and Jason Schneider. Good morning again. Good morning, Commissioners. For the record, Jason Schneider, Economic Development Coordinator, Marion. Cooper Whitman, Management Analyst in the Community Services Department, specifically working with Economic Development Program. Cooper, would you pull that real close? I'm struggling this morning to hear. I will. Thank you. And commissioners, this goes hand in hand with the dissolution of EDAB. Economic development recognizes that it's incredibly important to engage stakeholders, hear their concerns, um, as well as starting to pivot more of our, our funding and projects towards larger infrastructure community-based things rather than just private business. So, Cooper? Yeah, for your consideration today is the approval of a few tweaks we'd like to make to our approach uh, to economic development investments through something we're calling the Community Prosperity Initiative. Traditionally, the program has had community project grants as well as technical assistance grants available to communities in the county for economic development projects. A recent review of these programs identified some inefficiencies in the process that made it difficult for communities to get access to this funding. Uh, often missing an important window of opportunity for, uh, for those important projects. The Community Prosperity Initiative aims to overcome these obstacles while gathering information that will set the course for economic, ac economic development activities for the county for years to come. The model for the initiative is $15,000 investments given to each incorporated city within the county every year for three to five years. The funding is spent by these cities on economic development projects that they identify as being important to their goals, 
so long as the projects also align with our economic development program's five strategic plan goals. The economic development staff is made available for these cities assistance as needed to identify effective projects as well as carry them out. But the major requirement of each city to receive the funding will be one annual meeting with economic development staff. Through this meeting, we will gain information on not only what projects these, are, uh, these funds are being used for, but all economic development related activities, projects, hopes and dreams, concerns, problems, all of that. Um, and the information is gathered from every Marion County city for the life of the initiative, uh, which means at the end of three to five years, we will have hundreds of data points from which we can make uh, strategic decisions about where we should utilize uh, staff and funding uh, for the county. So essentially, uh, tons of small important projects in the short term leading to information that sets the overall course for the program in the long term. And a small but important provision to make mention of, the program, uh, the economic development program had $60,000 set aside uh, specifically to give to Grow EDC to support economic development uh, in the county uh, or in the North San Diego Canyon, and Grow EDC is no longer in operation. So commissioners, you directed us to keep that funding in the canyon for the same purpose. To that end, we recommend adding those funds to the Community Prosperity Initiative IGAs specifically for the canyon cities of Mill City Gates, Detroit, and Idana. So in the first year only of this initiative, <coughs> they would receive $30,000 instead of the 15000 so we are recommending that the board approves the resolution to establish the Community Prosperity Initiative as described, and we're here to answer any questions you may have. Are there questions or comments? I have a question, Mr. Chair. And I apologize, it, this just came to me. I know you guys briefed us, and uh, typical of me to just now <laughs> think of it. Um, first of all, I just really support this, and it's a, a great initiative, and thank you for your work in putting this together. East Salem is a big area, but it's not its own city. Would, would <coughs> funds of this nature be available to, to do this sort of work in East Salem under this proposal? In East Salem and all other unincorporated communities, not yet. That's one of the major weaknesses that we recognized um, with the CPI is that it doesn't go to East Salem, it doesn't go to Brooks, it doesn't go to Mahama. And so right now we wanted to be able to support the 20 cities that we do have in a way that we can, we can streamline and get the money out but we also know that that is a weakness that we need to focus on, making sure that our unincorporated communities get just as much attention. Do you have a, a thought on if this works well, we'll do something for unincorporated communities or? or we've, dis we've discussed that and um, we have a work session coming up in January that we wanted to be able to discuss that a little bit more, but it really comes down to, we want to see how this works in the incorporated cities and see what the, um, the strengths and weaknesses are of the plan so that we can roll it out along with the uh, unincorporated communities as well. So, Mr. Chair, thank you. So I would, I would uh, um, appreciate your question and comments. I know um, you think of uh, not only East Salem, but Brooks, mm -hmm. and we're investing, we're investing lottery dollars uh, in Brooks right now, and I think if there's special projects in those areas that uh, we certainly will do, whether it's infrastructure um, or the study that we're doing mm -hmm. in Brooks to figure out what the future looks like there. So there are several unincorporated areas that um, you know, we're, we're uh, going to continue to focus on and, and have been. I, I, uh, I was just sitting there going $30,000 to IDANA. Uh, I'm wondering what their general fund is, right? About 30, huh? About 70,000 a year. 70? Yeah, this is like 50% of their general fund. This is going to be like um, they hit the lottery. It's Christmas. Uh, it would be really interesting to see um, how these how these communities work together maybe they could put it in the reserve fund for the sewer system or something right <laughs> yeah i see danielle out there um but um yeah this is really good and it's the one year for those extra funds for those and when when are we and how are we going to communicate this to the the 20 incorporated cities uh, personal meetings as soon as we can okay so you don't want us like bragging about it and writing about it in the newspaper. 
do. Sure. Maybe the newspaper's <laughs> watching today. Maybe they'll write about something really good that's happening in Marion County. <laughs> this More is really, really exciting. Yeah, sure. and in, in history of putting this together over the last few months, Cooper particularly has gone out and met with almost every incorporated city to kind of discuss the concept and the idea and has pulled in over 100 projects that they already Wonderful. know that they're working on. Um, so most of them are, are very well aware of this and are, are anticipating it. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair, yes. may I ask a question? Um, I'm just looking at the underlying Microphone. document that, that talks about um, the funding model, and I just want to clarify. It says the cities will enter into an intergovernmental agreement with EDP. Intergovernmental agreements need to be with the county, so when we draft them, it, it would be with the county. The board can delegate um, a certain amount to department heads to sign the IGAs. I think it's 30000 but the document itself must be with the county. All right. With the county, but it could reference economic yes. development. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do, do we need to add something then in the approval of this that recognizes that, or just I that's think how just it is? having it in the record is fine. All right. Thank you. So a motion to okay. approve. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve a resolution establishing the Community Prosperity Initiative within the Marion County. Community Services Department Economic Development Program. I'll second the motion. All right, it's moved and seconded that we do approve a resolution establishing the Community <laughs> Prosperity Initiative. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor then say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you for Thank the you. presentation and the work on this project. Our next item is under Health and Human Services. We consider approval of an order that appoints Deborah Patterson as chair of the Marion County Health Advisory Board effective February 1st, 2020, with a term ending December 31st, 2023. Those dates may be just a little bit wrong, but I'm hoping we'll get that cleared up. Um, Carrie, you're gonna lead this. Patrick Vance has joined us and Deborah's here. Yes, good morning. Uh, Carrie Muller, Health and Human Services Ad Administrator, and with me. Patrick Vance, I'm the outgoing uh, uh, chair of the York County Health Advisory Board. And Deborah Patterson, I'm a member of the Health Advisory Board. So I thought I'd take a few moments to just say a little bit about our uh, Health and Human Services Health Advisory Board. Um, the development of the Health Advisory Board had been one of my primary focuses over the last three years. Um, the work of this volunteer group um, is really significant to me as the administrator and by uh, way to you to bring issues forward that are uh, pertinent to the health of our community. For many years, um, the Health Advisory Board really served as a uh, a body of interested individuals who listened, who listened to lots of presentations provided by our staff about the good, important work that we do. But my interest over the last three years has really been to change that focus significantly to having an engaged, uh, well-informed, and um, motivated group of individuals that really have done what we have needed them to do, and that's to connect their um, individual perspectives with the community and bring it back to the Health, uh, Health and Human Services Department to help inform our work. Um, so I have been really honored um, and very proud of the work this uh, Health Advisory Board has done, including um, a component of our strategic plan. You mentioned that earlier. I'm very proud of that work, and I'm very um, uh, appreciative of the commitment of going forward. The Health Advisory Board will take a significant component of that and help to engage and ensure that the consumers who um, engage in services with us, that it's done in a meaningful way and that our services are aligned to meet the needs of the community. So they're gonna roll up their sleeves and do some really good work uh, with our uh, strategic plan. So in saying all of that, um, Chair Vance has been a um, hallmark, I would say, to our Health Advisory Board. Um, he has been a dedicated servant and has served with us for many years, and in several 
what I would refer to as tours. I was thinking about that for my tours earlier. I have two tours of duty here, and I don't know how many Patrick has, but he has a bunch. And he served in many, many roles, including our uh, budget officer. So um, uh, we'll, miss, we'll miss Patrick, but as uh, Commissioner Cameron said earlier today, we've worked really hard to elevate um, the importance and the um, commitment of that group, and I cannot think of a better person to step into the role of chair. Uh, this is Deb Patterson. And and um, Deb's been, I think she said the other day, in this community for about 10 years, which blew me away. It seems like three or four. Um, but Deb's also served on our Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities Committee as the chair. And we have really, we've built some strong liaison roles between um, several of our statutory required boards. So Deb has served as the liaison between the um, IDDAC, Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities Advisory Committee, and to the health um, to the health advisory board. So, her it'll be great continuity for her coming in. She I would say too uh, holds uh, many of the values that I do, and that's um, a deep passion and commitment for the citizens of Marion County and the work that we do. So, um, for your consideration today, uh, we're here to ask you to uh, appoint Deb as the um, chair of health advisory board. I don't know if either of you want to say anything first. Good morning, Commissioners. I, I want to echo what, what Carrie said and also emphasize that under her leadership, uh, the national and state policies that have expanded the role of local health departments in areas around uh, mental health and addiction services and around coordination of services and carry in the, in, the, in the time we've worked together to address that change and address those new roles and expanding roles, uh, Kerry has been um, just a master at navigating the, the complexities. And so um, I think I speak on behalf of the, of the advisory board for the work that she was done, the leadership of, of Carrie and her management team as we all work together to try to figure out how this new dynamic was going to ex affect uh, services in Marion County to the people of Marion County. And I want to echo also her statement about Deb. Uh, Deb and I have worked together for a long time. She is a person I think the, the advisory board could not have selected a more suitable and fitting and dedicated and compassionate person to work on that transition and to keep that ball rolling than Deb. And, it's, and I'm, I'm proud to be able to walk away and say, uh, good luck, I think you're going to do well. I, I just have every confidence in, in how it's going to move forward. I, I would just like to thank you for the opportunity to have served on the Intellectual and Developmental Disability Advisory Committee. I'm on my third term and I'm very grateful. And I know particularly Commissioner Brentano, you have a real heart for helping people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, and I always will be grateful to you for that. I'm also thankful to both Commissioners Wilms and Commissioner um, Cameron for your participation and, and active involvement in the Health Advisory Board now, and ha prior and continuing. Um, and so um, after 19 years, I understand you've served, right? S something like that. Um, <laughs> not, not See what you're getting like into. He was 18 when he started. <laughs> Eight. So um, I would be honored to serve if, if appointed. All right, Commissioner Cameron, yeah. you're. Yeah, and just, Mr. Chair, I would just say the reason the reason of the participation from the board is due to the Kerry's leadership and uh, saying, "Hey, come over here and uh, participate in this process." And I'm so glad you did that, Kerry. And changing the meetings from you know nighttime to noon really helped the uh, turnout and the participation. And I know that board is going to continue under your your chairmanship uh, to do really good things. So appreciate all that happens there. <coughs> Mr. Chair, I'll move that we approve an order appointing Deborah Patterson to the chair as chair of the Marion County Health Advisory Board effective February 1st, 2020 with a term ending date of December 31st 2023 oh mr. chair I've been sort of wrestling about this one I think I'm going to abstain from this vote right. and I have some comments to make if I could um, first I just want to say thank you Deb for your service in the past um, and I'm I don't know but I assume you're gonna be appointed this job and I want to thank you for your future service um, 
and I uh, really respect that your appointment and your rec this was recommended by the, the Marion County uh, Health Advisory Board. Um, I've been serving as the liaison there, but I wasn't really uh, able to be a part of, of the discussions and the decision making on this, and so I don't feel comfortable in, in voting on this. Um, but I want you to know that I'm rooting for you, and, and uh, I trust and hope you'll do a great job in this position. All right, then I will second the motion. Okay. Therefore, it's been moved and seconded that we do approve an order that appoints Deborah Patterson as chair of the Marion County Health Advisory Board. Any further discussion? Nope. Then I'll call a question. All in favor say aye. 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 And one abstention. And thank you. The motion passes. And just before we go, I wish Jolene was still here because I can't think of a trio in my way of talking in one pile that so represents service to the community as you three. So thank you all. Thank you. All right. You want me to start a sign? The last item is under public works. Joe Fenimore is coming up. He may be nervous. We've had this before several times, and some poor person keeps changing things. <laughs> this is where we consider adopting an ordinance that amends the Marion County Code in the matter of re regulating the keeping of bees on residentially zoned lands under Marion County jurisdiction and declaring emergency. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Commissioners. For the record, Joe Fenimore, this ordinance before you today will add beekeeping standards to to Title VI of the Marion County Code and will complete the process to allow beekeeping for personal use in residential zones in Marion County. He held a public hearing on October 9th and approved amending the zone code to allow beekeeping in residential zones. In order to complete the process, staff prepared two ordinances for the board to consider. On October 30th, the board approved the first ordinance, which amended the zone code to remove the prohibition. The second ordinance would have adopted the actual beekeeping standards including allowing up to five hives, except from April through August, when seven hives will be allowed, regardless of lot size. When consider considering the second ordinance, the board chose not to adopt it and decided to have further discussion on whether to limit the number of hives based on size of the property. Staff discussed the issue with the board at two separate public meetings, and the board directed staff to prepare an ordinance that limits the number of hives as follows. For lots up to 5,000 square feet, one hive, However, that number may be increased to two hives during the month of April through August. For lots between 5,001 square feet and 20,000 square feet, three hives, and the number of hives may be increased to four during the month of April through August. For lots greater than 20,000 square feet, um, five hives, and the number of hives could be increased to seven during the month of April through August. The purpose of allowing additional hives in that time period is to accommodate the formation of, of hives through the splitting of, of existing hives for the collection of swarms. In addition to the number of hives, other standards that apply include hives shall comply with the setback requirements of the zone in which they are located, where a main building is located on a property, hives shall be located in a site or rear yard. If a hive is located within 25 feet of a property line, either a flyway barrier at least 6 feet in height shall be maintained, or the hive shall be elevated at least 10 feet above ground level. A constant supply of water shall be provided for bees within 15 feet of each hive, Beekeepers shall ensure that no bee comb or wax is left upon the property grounds to prevent attracting predators, and hives should be maintained in the condition such that the bees will not produce noise or odor that creates a nuisance for adjacent properties. If hives are located in a community garden or any lot owned by school, governmental agency, or religious organization, a signed warning of the hive should be posted at the primary public interest to the property. The ordinance has been prepared and is now set for formal adoption. You have the option of approving the ordinance as prepared direct staff to repair a modified ordinance or take no action at this time. Staff recommends the board approve the ordinance, adopt the ordinance as written by emergency procedure. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. All right. Is there a buzz about this? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm afraid to say anything at all. Thank you, Joe. Um, I think we've spent enough time with this. Pretty well understand what it's going to do. Tried to, tried to um, I'll say mediate any issues to neighbors and impacts to the community and we note that if there are we'll have ways of addressing them so with that I would appreciate a motion that would uh, uh, adopt the ordinance by emergency are you, are you sure you don't want to tweak it a little bit no I don't even want to look at it again <laughs>
All right, Mr. Chair, I move that we adopt an ordinance amending the Marion County Code in the matter of regulating the keeping of bees on residentially zoned lands under Marion County jurisdiction, declaring an emergency. And so I move that the chair read the ordinance by title only twice. All right. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. All right, it's been moved and seconded to have the chair read the ordinance by title only twice. Any further discussion? You're going to call a question. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes, and I will read the title twice at this time. In the matter of regulating the keeping of bees on residentially zoned lands under Marion County jurisdiction and declaring an emergency. And now for a second time, in the matter of regulating the keeping of bees on residentially zoned lands under Marion County jurisdiction and declaring an emergency. And now... Mr. Chair, I move to approve an ordinance amending the Marion County Code in the matter of regulating the keeping of bees on residentially zoned lands under Marion County jurisdiction and declaring an emergency. I'll second the motion. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the ordinance on keeping bees in Marion County and declaring an emergency. Any further discussion? I see and hear none. All in favor then say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion passes. Joe. I'm sorry, but thank you so much. I'm sure I'll do that to you again. That's why it's hard to apologize directly. You know, a bee can only sting once, Commissioner. <laughs> yeah, but there's lots of them. All right. So that takes care of our action items this morning. I know you're wanting, do you have something you want to say before we? Uh, yeah, this is, this is our last uh, board session before Christmas. Before so. Christmas. Yeah. Or red ties. Next week we Good have job. special. I didn't. Next Sorry. week's next week we have special ties that we're going to wear at the end of the new year because our board session next week is on New Year's not, Eve Tuesday. Not next week. We can. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Our next board session, right? Because we don't meet next week, but uh, we'll have some a special presentation uh, on New Year's Eve to bring, to ring in the new year. So, um, and by the way, I really like your suspenders that you have. Uh, that you that you're wearing today they're, they're yeah. pretty classy yeah. I wish I could just kind of show them but really thank you good so, so thank you good I thought week. you might have something special for us I didn't know you're just gonna kind of drivel on a little bit but <laughs> Colm I'll give you that same opportunity to end with the flash no I've, all right everybody passes the last I'll do is uh, read the items where we'll be together in this uh, coming shortened week um, Thursday, 8 o'clock, City of Salem, Marion County meeting. It'll be a Sassy Onion, 1244 State Street in Salem. Thursday, 9 o'clock. Hope they gave us enough time. Probably didn't. Work session, Marion County Health and Human Services, Data Analytics, and Quality Improvement Programs. That'll be in the Silverton Conference Room, 5th Floor, 555 Court Street in Salem. Again, on Thursday the 19th at 3 o'clock, we'll meet with public at Works Employees and Willamette Conference Room, Marion County Public Works, 5155 Silverton Road, Northeast in Salem. Next Monday, the 23rd, 8.30, calendar review, Silverton Conference Room, and that'll be followed immediately at 9 o'clock. Same location, Silverton Conference Room of Management Update. And then, as far as this list goes, at this time, we're closed in observance of Christmas. I think I'm going to honor that. I'm not coming in after all. Good job. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, well, we just have a few people left. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like those, those folks out there. All right. Anything else you'd like? No, to? sir. Anybody last chance? All right. We thank you all. We'll call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>